Maya is a witch. She's been looking for her missing cat all morning. Can you help her? The cat is over here. Maya is heading to her best friend, Sandra. She brings her something delicious. It looks square from the outside, but it looks round when opened. Also, it looks like a triangle when taken out. Can you guess the name of the food? It's a pizza. On the way, Maya decides to take a new route. She finds herself in the middle of an unfamiliar street and sees some cute little houses. All except two are blue. Also, all except two houses are red and all except two are purple. Can you figure out how many houses of each color are present on that street? Let's focus on the first two statements. We can fairly assume that two houses are not red and two houses are not blue. Now, one of those houses that are not red can be blue. Similarly, one of the non-blue houses can be red. If we remember the third statement that all except two houses are purple, we can conclude that the street has only one red, one blue, and one purple house. Maya enters Sandra's kitchen. Can you count the exact number of frogs in this location? Thirteen. This one is just a picture. Sandra shows Maya two pictures of her sisters. Ella lives alone, while Elsa lives with her fiancé. Can you guess which one is Elsa? It's the first lady. She has two towels in her bathroom, while Ella only has one. Maya asks Sandra, can you make the sum of 60 by using three times the same number? Sandra replies, easy, 20 plus 20 plus 20. But there's one more way to do so. Can you figure it out? The other way is 55 plus 5. Maya needs help in her magic shop, so she invites Harry for a job interview. When Harry arrives, he looks pretty nervous, so Maya offers him some hot coffee. She puts the cup in front of him and asks, what's before you? Harry replies, tea. After hearing the answer, Maya hires this candidate immediately. Can you guess why? If the answer was coffee, Maya would never have asked such an easy question. She meant the alphabet U, the letter T, comes before a U. That's why Maya is impressed by Harry's answer. Harry shows Maya three cards from a standard deck face down. He says, to the left of the queen, there are one or two jacks. To the right of the jack are one or two jacks. To the right of the club, there are one or two diamonds. To the left of the diamond, are one or two diamonds. Can you guess what the three cards are? The Jack of Clubs, Jack of Diamonds, and Queen of Diamonds, or Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Clubs, and Queen of Diamonds. Maya tells Harry, let me show you some Focus Pocus too. I can make the number one disappear by adding something to it. Can you guess how? She needs to add a letter G before one and it will be gone. Simple. Maya leaves her magic shop to get some lunch. In a while, she returns and finds Harry unconscious on the floor in the storage room. She calls doctors and questions three persons standing nearby. 
Billy says, I was checking out the shelf with love potions when I heard weird noises from the storage. But I didn't bother. I thought Harry just dropped some stuff. Scarlet says, I came here to buy the missing ingredient for my revenge potion. I don't have time for this. And Bella says, I came here for red candles, but the seller was absent. Can you guess what happened here? Take a look at Scarlet's recipe. The missing ingredient is a spider. Harry got bitten by a venomous spider when he tried to get it out of this broken jar. There's a tiny bite on his right arm. Next Sunday, Meyer receives a call from Sandra at 7 a.m. Sandra is very excited because she had found a recipe for an immortality potion in her library. Maya arrives at Sandra's house at 10 a.m. and finds her lying unconscious on the floor. All her books are gone. Maya calls the police. The detective arrives immediately and questions three suspects. Sandra's husband, Frank, says, I'm a school teacher. I haven't been home all morning because I had four classes on my schedule. Shelly, the housekeeper, says, I had a day off and spent time with my boyfriend. And Bob, the gardener, says, I've been planting roses in the backyard all morning. I haven't even entered the house yet. After hearing all three stories, the detective knows exactly who's a liar. What about you? Frank is lying. He said he'd been at school, but schools are closed on Sundays. Thankfully, Maya saved a screenshot with the recipe on her phone. Now she's making a potion for Sandra. Unfortunately, the last four ingredients in the recipe are encoded. Here's the first one. It's a fruit that is always sad. Can you figure it out? It's a blueberry. Also, she needs to add something that has an ear but cannot hear. Any ideas what it might be? Corn. The next one is a cheese that is made backward. Eat them. In the final ingredient is a room that you can eat. Maya needs to add a mushroom. Maya is visiting Sandra in the hospital. She gives her the magic potion and Sandra gets well immediately. On the way back, Maya meets three doctors in the lobby, but only one of them isn't fake. Can you guess who? The first doctor is wearing a dirty coat but it doesn't prove that he's a fake. Meanwhile, this handsome bearded doctor has a picture of a woman on his badge, which means that he had stolen someone else's pass. As for the third person, she's wearing colorful nail extensions, which is against common sanitary rules, so she can't be a doctor. Maya runs away from the imposters and finds herself in a creepy abandoned part of the hospital. Finally, she sees three doors, but each door is hiding some danger. There's a werewolf hiding behind the first door. There's a wicked wizard waiting for Maya behind the second door. And there's a magical portal leading to a black hole behind the third door. Can you help Maya choose the safest option to escape? She should choose the first door. Look out the window. It's a new moon. Werewolves are only dangerous on a full moon. Maya escapes successfully and calls her sister Wendy who lives in a village. Wendy says, come over and we'll figure it out. Maya boards a train. Maya notices these four passengers. One of them is a famous thief. Can you guess who?
This elegant lady is a thief. The first guy is reading about her crimes in his newspaper. Finally, Maya arrives at Wendy's house. She spots one odd detail about this place right away. Can you see it too? It's too risky to leave the iron in such a dangerous position. Maya enters the living room and spots two weird details. What about you? Take a closer look at the calendar. There's no June 31st. Also, this chair only has three legs. Maya starts to suspect that Wendy is under a spell. To test her logical thinking, she offers her this riddle. There are eight brothers that look alike. They're considered to be weak, yet they protect the king in every battle. If they move ahead, they never turn back. Who are they? Wendy failed to crack this riddle. What about you? The eight brothers are pawns in the chess game. After a long search, Maya finds a spell that will break all black magic, but it's locked in this safe that requires a seven digit code. Can you help Maya open the safe? There are exactly seven books on the shelf above the safe. It's a hint. Each book has a Roman numeral on its spine. So, the code is 2113542. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. This fresh set of optical illusions will definitely challenge your visual perception. If your brain isn't happy when you look at things that spin and flash, be careful and get somebody to watch this astonishing illusionary art with you. Ready? Go full screen and let's get started. Take a look at this pair of circles. It's not an illusion. They're identical and they do rotate. But they don't actually move across the screen. The arrows confuse your brain so it seems that the circles are shrinking and even moving back and forth. If you manage to focus your gaze so that they stop moving, you're a wizard. What about this shining star? Is it static or dynamic? Although the star seems to be pulsing, its size doesn't change at all but its popping color creates an illusion of movement. Let's move on to our next one. Check this out. Can you spot any movement? This picture is static, but if you take your time to look at these flowers carefully, your brain will definitely convince you that they're moving. What about this picture? The direction of this pattern makes the brain think that the circle is rotating to the left, but it's a lie. The same goes for this cute pattern. Can you see it spinning around? What about this picture? Can you spot any movement? Well, in this case, it's not surprising because this image is animated. An optical illusion is not always an optical illusion, so be careful. Let's take a look at the next one. This star seems to be dancing because its asymmetrical shape confuses your brain's expectations. Maybe it's time to ask ourselves, what else is my brain lying to me about right now? 
What can you say about this beautiful pattern? Is it just a basic optical illusion or an animated video? That's right, it's an animation. Here's our next one. If you focus all your attention on the middle of this picture, it will soon begin to move. But in fact, it stays the same. Don't let your brain play tricks on you. Your perception of this image may change if you blink a bunch of times and shake your head. Moving on, take a look at this tricky pattern. Is this image static? Yes, it truly is. Some optical illusions work by fooling around with contrasts in our field of vision. These two circles consist of small rotating striped circles. They appear to change the direction of rotating thanks to how our brains deal with information immediately within our focus. It's different from the way it processes peripheral information. You can see it when you focus on one circle and then on another. Are you dizzy yet? Let's move on to the next one. Zigzag is a great tool to create a bunch of optical illusions that can make you feel like you're flying. But this particular zigzag pattern is animated. Is it? Nope, it's a static picture. Be careful with zigzags. The next optical illusion will make you see with your eyes closed. All you have to do is stare at this Marilyn Monroe's nose at the center of this portrait. Continue staring at the same spot for at least 7 seconds and try not to blink. Ready? 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now take a look at your ceiling and blink a bunch of times. Close your eyes. Can you still see the portrait? Don't worry, it'll disappear in a few seconds. This optical illusion is called an after image. It appears after you've stared at an image for some time. Usually, it requires around 30 seconds. Then you close your eyes or look at a white piece of paper afterwards. Overstimulation makes the rods and cones in your eyes lose sensitivity. That's why for a short period afterward, you interpret colors as their paired primary color. Now, let's take a look at this tricky pattern. Is this image static or dynamic? It's not an optical illusion. This pattern is animated. If you manage to guess, great job! Now, let's take a look at this one. Do these spheres move across the screen? Nope, they don't. If you were careful enough, you noticed the top moving when you squinted and concentrated on the spheres. This optical illusion is static. But if you take your time and focus on the center of the screen, it will begin to rotate. Let's move on to our next one. This optical illusion will make you feel like a magician and level up your concentration skills. At this point, you probably see that the static circles begin to move, pop, and spin slightly. But which way? There's no right answer here. The largest circle probably spins to the left. But if you switch your focus to the center of the image, the same circle will begin to spin to the right. The movement will change depending on which layer of this image you're currently focusing on. Arrows inside these colorful circles may confuse your vision. Try not to look at them, and you'll notice that the circles inside this illusion 
aren't changing their shape or moving at all. It's pretty clear that this crazy watermelon isn't spinning, isn't it? Nope. If you screw up with your eyes, you can verify this by focusing your gaze on the sphere. See? It doesn't move anymore. This figure can begin to move like a snake, and the black points will begin to blink white. But don't let your brain fool you. This image is still the same. Are you dizzy yet? Let's experiment with disappearing dots. Focus on the central green dot. Try not to blink for a while. You will see one or more of the yellow dots disappearing and then reappearing randomly. Here's another illusion with disappearing dots. Thousands of people worldwide complained that this simple optical illusion had made them question reality. There are 12 black dots at the intersections of this image, but your brain won't let you see them all at once. Well, how many dots did you count? There are 12 black dots in this image, and it's a fact, but most people can't see all 12 dots at once. When you're focusing on that black dot in the center of your field of view, your visual system is automatically filling in what's going on around it. And this regular pattern of gray lines on a white background makes your brain suggest that there are no black dots at all. That's why you miss the intermittent black dots, or they disappear and reappear as your eye jitters around. This cute animation is also very tricky. It pictures a moon and six stars surrounding it. There's also a dotted circular layer moving in the background. Try not to move your head at all. If you manage to focus your eyes on the moon and stay perfectly still, you'll soon notice that the stars begin to disappear. How many of them did you make disappear? There's no one correct answer here. The number of disappeared stars depends on your perception. This tricky wheel can make your brain think that it rotates, but it's a lie. You may notice that the wheel changes the direction when you tilt your head to the right or to the left. This trick will make your hands melt like water. Don't worry, it's not forever. Keep staring at the center of the screen for 30 seconds. Try not to blink. Now, take a look at your hands. Are they melting? You can also look at some text and notice that your vision is wavy. Take a look at this tricky optical illusion. What can you say about this wheel? Is it static or dynamic? It's static. Your brain plays tricks on you. Now let's give your eyes a little break by changing the task. Can you spot an odd monkey out? Here it is. Can you find a different monster out? This guy in the right corner doesn't look as happy as the others. There are many zeros in here. Can you also see another hidden number? Here it is. Does this pattern consist of red apples only? No. 
Nope. Here's one tomato. Can you find two similar emojis among this variety? Here they are. What about this set of emojis? Can you see two identical emojis? Here they are. Take a look at these emojis. Are they all different? Nope. These two emojis are similar. How many emojis can you find among this variety? There are three. What about this collection? Can you spot any identical emojis here? This task is tricky. All these emojis are different. If you manage to crack our trick, good job! Take a look at this set. Can you find a pair of identical emojis? Nope, it's impossible, because these two are similar. Does this cat crowd have any odd details? This guy over here is not a cat, it's a rabbit. Can you find a four-leaf clover in here? Here it is. Lucky you! Let's spend the next 10 minutes or so on a nice and refreshing brain workout, shall we? Ready? Go! There are some flowers growing in the field and some bees flying over them. How many flowers and bees are there if both of the following statements are true? If all the bees land on all the flowers, one bee for a flower, one bee won't get a flower. If every two bees decide to share a flower, one flower will be left without a bee. If you answered that there were four bees and three flowers, you're absolutely right. Anna majored in accounting at university. Her roommates wanted to test her intelligence. They took three envelopes and wrote some messages on them. Then they put the answers to Anna's exam questions in one of the envelopes. Only one envelope had a truthful message written on it. The other two were false. Anna wasn't allowed to open the envelopes and could only pick one. The first message read, There are no exam answers here. The second one was, The exam answers are here. And the third message read, The exam answers aren't in the second envelope. Which envelope should Anna pick? The third one, it tells the truth, which means the exam answers are in the first envelope. A businessman was about to go through a security check at the airport when he realized someone had taken his luggage. The airport police had three suspects. Lisa said, I wouldn't take someone's old brown bag. I have my own. Mike explained, he was a light traveler and didn't have luggage. He put everything in his backpack. Rob had a broken arm and a sprained ankle. He could hardly carry anything. The police immediately knew who had done it. Can you figure it out? It was Lisa. Nobody told her the luggage was brown. One day, Detective Morris was patrolling a local park. As soon as he entered it, he saw several bags with sand. He kept walking and soon came across a picnic basket and binoculars. A few feet further, he saw some items of clothing and a large, colorful sheet. There was also an unconscious man lying on the ground. The detective immediately figured out what had happened. Can you? The man was flying in a hot air balloon. 
When it started to lose altitude, he tried to make the balloon lighter, but his attempt was unsuccessful. When several friends decided to play cards, they noticed that a few cards had been lost. But they found out that if they dealt the rest of the cards among four people, three cards would remain. If they dealt these cards between three people, two cards would remain. And if they distributed the cards among five people, again, two cards would remain. How many cards were left in the pack? There were 47 cards left in the pack. Let's see. If 47 is divided by 4, 3 is left out. And if 47 is divided by either 3 or 5, 2 is left out. Scott and Mary were on vacation. One day, Mary told Scott she couldn't go to the beach with him because she was feeling unwell. When Scott came back to the room to grab his phone, Mary was gone. Oh. He found her by the pool and asked, Are you alone here? She nodded, but Scott immediately realized she was lying. How? There were two drinks on her table and two fruit platters. And now, I've got probably one of the coolest tasks for you. Yeah. I'll show you different products and you'll need to figure out if they're real products or cakes. Let's start! It looks like a regular bag of Doritos. Can it be anything else? Look at that! It's a cake! Here is a pretty normal cheeseburger, I would say. Mm. But what secret is it hiding? It's cake again. Wow, I'd love to try it. Oh, a tube of toothpaste. Can it be cake too? Ah, no, just some regular toothpaste. Thought so. And some good old toilet paper, right? No, you must be kidding me. It looks so realistic. Mmm, a corn cob. Yummy. It looks delicious, but can it be a cake? Oh my, it is! I'm not sure what I'd prefer now, though. A cake or some sweet corn? How about this sneaker? Is it real or edible? And again, it's a cake! How is it even possible? Oh my god! Now, it must be an orange, right? There's no way it can be a cake. It just looks too realistic. And indeed, it's a real fruit. An eggplant or a cake shaped like an eggplant? That's the question. Oh, I see. It's the real thing. Okay, what have we got here? A banana. A pretty realistic banana if you ask me. Can it be a cake? Apparently, the answer is, yes, it can. Wow. Ooh. How about this cup of coffee with milk? I can't believe my eyes. It's a cake. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my God. And the last one, the toughest. Is it a clock or a cake? I mean, I'm almost sure it's a real clock, but you never know. It's a cake! Wow, this task has blown my mind! But back to our detective riddles. Amy won $20 million in the lottery. The night after she received the money, she stayed at the most expensive hotel and made a video. It was about her life and how she hadn't seen her sister since childhood. The next day, three girls showed up, claiming to be her sister. All of them looked so much alike. 
But which one tells the truth? It's the lady on the right. She has the same mole as Amy on her cheek, a tattoo with the letter A, and a tattoo with two girls holding hands. Mrs. Kim called the school principal to report someone had taken her student's test. She added that she had noticed a stranger wearing school clothes, gloves, and a red mask. This person also had three star tattoos on their fingers. The principal didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves, but then how did she see three star tattoos on the intruder's fingers? Ah. Two friends, Mark and Timothy, were walking home from the supermarket with their purchases. That was the last week before the winter holidays, so they had a lot of bags. Mark kept complaining about how heavy his bags were. Then, Timothy told him, I don't understand what you're upset about. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice as many bags as you. And if I gave you one of my bags, we would have the same number. How many bags were the guys carrying? Timothy had seven bags, while Mark was goofing off and carrying only five bags. The art museum owner was visiting the construction site to see the progress. At some point, he left his briefcase with important documents on the table. A worker grabbed it and ran away. The museum owner didn't see who it was, but he immediately called the police. There were three suspects. The architect said he had been talking on the phone trying to get electricity for the site as there was none. The manager told the police he had been teaching his staff to work as a team. The electrician explained he had been down in the basement trying to fix a broken lamp. The detectives immediately figured out who was lying. Can you? It was the electrician. There was no electricity at the construction site. Soon after Bob became prom king, he vanished. His teachers were looking for him everywhere. They believed there were three people who could be behind his disappearance. Bob's rival, Joe, said he had been dancing all night with his girlfriend and hadn't seen Bob. Bob's classmate, Dennis, claimed he hadn't been feeling so well, so he spent all night in the lounge. Laura, Bob's secret admirer, said she had been counting the votes. The teachers immediately realized who knew something about Bob's disappearance. And have you figured it out? It was Laura. Bob had already become prom king. She didn't need to count the votes. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Today, I only have two riddles for you, but it means that you're not going to crack them easily. Prepared? Here's the first one. Far, far away from any civilization, there is a remote island with 20 inhabitants. They were born there, and all their lives they've been into math, which helped them become pretty perfect logicians. Unfortunately, they're imprisoned, being trained to win the Nobel Prize, and they can't leave the island. Well, actually, there's a way. Each islander can approach a guard at night and ask to leave the island. If the islander who asked to leave has green eyes, they will be allowed to leave. If not, they'll be tossed into the island's volcano instead. So, obviously, no one takes the risk because none of them knows their eye color. The thing is that all of them actually have green eyes, so each one could theoretically leave, but, well, none did. They don't have any reflective surfaces, they're mute, and they're not allowed to communicate with each other in any way. The only time they all see each other is during the lineup every morning. One day, I got the privilege to travel to the island and present myself during the lineup. I could make an announcement, but there was one strict rule. I couldn't tell them any new information unless I wanted to be thrown into a volcano. But I really wanted to help those guys out, so here's what I said. At least one of you has green eyes. How many days will it take all of them to leave the island after my announcement? Okay, maybe 20 is a bit hard to figure out right away. 
So let's first consider the case of two islanders, Edda and Phi. Both of them have green eyes, but they don't know their eye color. So the day when I announce the statement, they pay attention to it and look at each other, remembering the eye color. Edda sees that Phi has green eyes, which aligns with my statement, but she can't be sure that she has green eyes too. Phi does the same. She sees Edda's green eye color, but he isn't sure about his own eye color. So the night comes and none of them leaves. When they both see each other the next day, they realize something. Edda realizes that if Phi had seen that she didn't have green eyes, he would have understood that the one person with green eyes was him and would have left the island that night. But he didn't do it. So Edda realizes that Phi saw her green eyes and wasn't sure about his eye color. So her eyes must be green. Phi has the very same logic and figures out that he has green eyes too. So now they both know it and the second night they both leave. In the case of the two islanders, they both left the second night. Now let's say there are three people on the island, Edda, Phi, and Theta. Each of them sees two green-eyed people, but they still can't be sure about their own eye color. So no one leaves the first night. In the morning, they see each other again, but unfortunately, none of them are sure again. Theta thinks that possibly her eyes aren't green and Etta and Phi were watching each other. She figures that now they will both see that none of them left and will leave the next night. Each one of the three thinks so and once again, no one leaves. The second night passes and the three islanders meet the third morning. So Theta is now sure that Etta and Phi weren't just watching each other, but her too. So she must have green eyes. Etta and Phi, who were following the same logic all the way, realize the same thing. So all of them figure that they have green eyes and leave on the third night. Now, if I add another islander, the same logic will work, and it'll take one more night to figure it out. In our case, there are 20 islanders. They will all see 19 green-eyed islanders and will all wonder if others see 18 or 19 green-eyed islanders. So they will watch each other for 19 nights and when they see each other on the 20th morning, they will all leave on the 20th night after that. Okay, great job. Here's the second riddle. This one is much easier in my opinion, so I'll give you a little break. But you still need to keep your brains turned on. You take a voyage across a sea, delivering fish tanks with rare species of fish to scientists who will work on increasing the population of that said fish species. But on your way, you get into a storm, and the fish tanks get drowned in the sea. The records get lost too, so you're not even sure how many fish tanks there were to start with. Still, you must find them all. Good news, there's a rescue submarine you can use, but there's only enough fuel for one trip to the bottom of the ocean. So, before going down, you make some inspections. Thermal imaging detects 50 organisms in the areas where you have lost the fish tanks. Those are your fish and sharks, which are not yours. Using a scanner, you scan three regions of the sea more closely, region A, region B, and region C. The scanner shows that in sector A, there are four fish tanks and two sharks. In region B, there are two fish tanks and four sharks. Just as you're about to scan region C, the scanner breaks down and doesn't show you anything. So, you need to figure out how many fish tanks there are to send to the submarine. This is not an easy task, especially with lost records. You don't know exactly how many fish tanks were on board, but you remember that there were no more than 13 of them. You also don't know how many fish there are in each fish tank, but you know that it's the same amount in each one of them. There's also information that in every sector, there's a different amount of sharks, and not more than seven in each one of them. Knowing all this, can you figure out how many fish tanks drowned in Sector C? The best way to solve this kind of problem is by using a table. So, we know that there are 13 fish tanks at most. Six of them were located in Sectors A and B, so there are between six to 13 fish tanks in total. Can't be more, can't be less. 
since we already have six. Now, let's move on to the sharks. In each sector, there are no more than seven sharks. Also, there's never the same amount of sharks in two regions. Since regions A and B have two and four sharks, the possible number of sharks in region C is one, three, five, six, and seven. Let's put these numbers in the rows. In a column next to it, we put six in each row. That's the number of sharks in regions A and B. Now we know that there were 50 creatures located in the waters. So for each possible amount of sharks, we can calculate the remaining amount of fish. 43 in case of six sharks plus one in region C. 41 in case of six sharks plus three in region C. 39 in case there are five sharks in region C. 38 if there are six sharks there and 37 fish in total if there are seven sharks in the last region. Okay, now we have to remember that the number of fish is the same in every tank. So, the total amount of fish must be divisible by one of the possible values for the total amount of fish tanks. 43, 41, and 37 are prime numbers that aren't divisible at all. In case of 38, we'd need 19 tanks two fish in each, but we know that the maximum number of fish tanks is 13. So the only possible scenario is 39 fish in 13 tanks, meaning three fish in each tank. So in region C, seven more fish tanks got lost on the bottom of the sea. I hope you can find them all now. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.